For this week's video, I thought it would be fun to look at a few of my favorite soccer books as it is getting to be near Christmas time and you might be looking for a few books to get your loved ones or yourself. So I thought, why not show off a few of the books that uh, I absolutely love uh, and I've been reading over the over the years or I've collected over the years. So we're going to look at five soccer books that I have read over the years and that I absolutely love and that you might actually like as well. Now, of course, guys, you can always check me out on social media. My handles are down in the description below. And also, if you want to buy any of these books that I talk about, I put the links in the description down below. So you can go to Amazon and pick one of those up now uh, or over the holidays to read during the Christmas period. All right, so let's take a look at these five books that I've picked out for today to showcase here on YouTube. Now, the first one that I want to take a look at is a book that I've just finished reading just the other day. It's called Who Ate All the Squid? And this is a really fun book. This is a book that's come out on the Great Pitch Publishing Group or from that group. And it is a book that uh, was written uh, originally, uh, the manuscript, I guess, it was written around 2003, 2004 time period by author Devin Rowcliffe. And the book tells the story of Busan icons during the uh, early 2000s when Sunderland legend Ian Porterfield took over management of the club and the tumultuous season that the club had. Now, when I heard about this book, I... Uh, became very interested in it because I spent three years of my life living in Seoul, South Korea, and uh, I was a season ticket holder for FC Seoul uh, and spent a lot of time watching South Korean football. So this book was very interesting to get, and um, I absolutely loved it uh, while reading it. A uh, very interesting story uh, about Porterfield during his time there at Busan Icon. Now, this was, keep in mind, written about a time about nearly 20 years ago, so uh, some of the things are... Uh, a bit of a blast from the past, if you will, uh, when you read it. But uh, definitely a good book to get, and I highly recommend Devin Rowcliffe's Who Ate All the Squid. Now for a book that I read quite some time ago, uh, but still remains in as one of my favorites in uh, my collection of soccer books, and that is Calcio by John Foote. This is a fantastic book that uh, talks about basically the history of Italian football and is a must-read if you are a fan of Serie A or um, the Itzuri. Uh, so definitely check this book out and uh, pick it up at Amazon or at your favorite bookstores. I know that uh, Waterstones tends to to carry it. I've seen it there, um, but that depends, I guess, on if you want to go out during these times. Now for a book that I just started reading for a second time uh, just a week ago, and that is the Robbie Fowler, My Life in Football biography, or I guess I should say auto autobiography. Uh, now, I originally read the original release of this about 15 years ago, uh, back around 2006, 2007. Robbie Fowler is one of my favorite all-time Liverpool players, and um, I absolutely loved watching him uh, as I was growing up. And so I wanted to read his book when it came out uh, in the early to mid-2000s. Um, read it once, haven't read it, haven't touched it for nearly 15 years, don't even know where the original copy was that I had. Um, so I recently picked up this copy from Amazon, and um, it is an updated version that has some information about his time in Australia, I believe, and uh, some of his career post-2007 uh, when he went back to Liverpool uh, during that time period with Rafa Benitez. Um, definitely a book that I'm enjoying reading once again, uh, getting to uh, read about his, uh, his early days there um, at Liverpool and uh, as well as a youth player uh, in, the, in the 80s. Uh, and one of the interesting things is, is when I read the book originally, I was living in the U.S. and uh, was a university student and didn't necessarily have um, a lot of the uh, knowledge of, of England or, or, or Europe that I do now um, after living here for over 10 years. So uh, it's pretty cool to go back and to read this book and to go over some things that I didn't quite necessarily understand completely uh, to getting uh, you know, more knowledge of that now as I read it now uh, 15 plus years on. So that's pretty cool. So definitely a book I highly recommend and I've just started reading it again. So check that out if you are a Liverpool fan or you're looking for something for your Liverpool fans in your lives. Danish Dynamite, uh, a fantastic book that tells the story of the Danish national team, uh, talking about it from its days of being amateur all the way up uh, into the 80s when the, the phenomenal cult uh, Danish Dynamite team was around with Michael Laudrup uh, and the like. Uh, a fantastic book. Read that over the summer. Uh, couldn't put it down. It was really good. Uh, and I was actually inspired to get it after Denmark's Euro 2020 tournament. And uh, everything that happened with Christian Eriksen at the Euro 2020 tournament, uh, I found myself 
uh, rooting for Denmark throughout the tournament. Uh, got a shirt, got the book, uh, and really got into uh, Danish football uh, during the time period. So a very good book to pick up about Denmark and the national team and uh, all of its accomplishments. Definitely check that book out. Now, finally, my final book here on my list is my all-time favorite soccer book and a book that I always tell people to pick up. Uh, I always recommend it, and that is The Miracle of Castle de Sangro by Joe McGinnis. Now, I've talked about this book before on a video here. Uh, it is my all-time favorite soccer book. I actually picked this up at a Barnes & Noble uh, in the middle of America one day in 2007 before I had to catch a flight the next day and uh, picked it up not knowing anything about this book and absolutely fell in love with it from the first couple of pages uh, once I started reading it. Now, this book uh, was written by McGinnis in the um, late 1990s, uh, after the team Castle de Sangro uh, had made it to Serie B, and he had followed the team throughout the whole season, and it uh, documents their uh, their year in Serie B and the the ups and downs uh, that this tiny little team Castle de Sangro went through, uh, some player deaths, some uh, different things that happened during the season, and um, Joe was right there as a fly on the wall, and it was um, it's quite. Quite the story uh, that uh, Joe McGinnis tells. Now, if you aren't familiar with Joe McGinnis, he was a uh, famous American author, uh, wrote books on uh, Nixon uh, as well as O.J. Simpson, and it was the uh, the money that he was receiving for the O.J. Simpson book that he wrote that he used to fund his trip to Italy to live for a year to write about Castle de Sangro. So um, quite an interesting man. And um, I had the chance actually to interview him at one time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to some scheduling conflicts, we had to postpone that. And it was a time when his health was deteriorating um, and we were never able to reschedule that interview. And unfortunately, Joe uh, died not too long afterwards. Um, but his book, uh, all of his books, really, his memory lives on in those. And this is absolutely one of the best soccer books I've ever read uh, and one that uh, is hard to put down because some of the things that happen in it is, um, how can I say, it's just not uh, something you would think of happening uh, in football. And he's a, um, a, a writer who had lots of success in other areas and didn't really know that much about soccer, not that much about football, uh, had only become a fan during World Cup 1994 and subsequently started to follow the game right after that and wrote about it. So um, it's kind of almost an outsider's look at the game and it actually really lends well to the writing of that story because he didn't really, uh, he wasn't that familiar with the game uh, before he had gone to Castle de Sangro to write about it. So, all right guys, those are my five picks for my favorite soccer books. Really, my five favorite soccer books for right now. And like I said before, you can go to the descriptions below and you can find those links on Amazon to pick up those books. Now, I do have an affiliate link down in the descriptions. Uh, if you want to click on that and purchase uh, a book or, or anything there, I will get a little bit of a kickback uh, from Amazon. That doesn't cost you anymore. So it would be really appreciated, though, if you did use that link, if you're going to buy uh, any of these books or any other soccer books this Christmas period. So, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time here on YouTube.